Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, are you prepared to do this? What am I talking about? Talking about this right here. So this is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. So guys, I'll ask you, are you prepared to give an answer to anyone regarding the hope you have in the Lord Jesus Christ? It's a good question to ask because... Guys, there are so many people in this world who are lost, who are hurting, who are filled with fear and anxiety, and they're looking for a peace within themselves that only Jesus Christ can give them. And if you're watching this, odds are you know that peace, you know Jesus Christ, and so you already have experienced that we should be prepared to share that with as many people as possible. And given the times in which we live right now, it's the perfect opportunity to do so because, as we've talked about before, there's so many different opportunities to share the good news of Jesus Christ. There's things like central bank digital currencies where we can see anybody who's spending cash, right? We can say, hey, uh... You better not get used to that, right? Or enjoy that while you can. Well, what do you mean? Well, you're not going to be able to do that for much longer. They're trying to roll out this central bank digital currency. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. Did you know the Bible foretold this almost 2,000 years ago? What? It did. It opens up a whole conversation. Given all of the things we see going on in the world today, particularly in the Middle East, this makes a lot of people, it piques their interest. They become curious about it. Well, does the Bible have anything to say about that? People who aren't even Christians may ask that question. We need to be prepared to tell them about the good news we have in Jesus Christ. Just everyday life situations where people have hit rock bottom, they're depressed, they're struggling with addiction. There's all sorts of issues that people are dealing with in everyday life. And we need to be prepared to tell them about the hope we have in Jesus Christ and how they can have that hope too. So guys, one of the reasons I'm bringing this up on this particular video on this particular day, is I want to turn your attention to this. So I wrote this book. Coming to Jesus, One Man's Search for Truth and Life Purpose. I'm not trying to promote the book, right? I'm not trying to make a buck. It's free. As you can see, it's always been free. But the reason I bring it up today is, as you can see it here from the publication date, today is April 17th, 2024. It marks 10 years since this book was published. It's had over 250,000 downloads in that time on not just Amazon, but Apple and Kobo, Nook, Google Play, Google Books, whatever you want to call it. All these different, pretty much anywhere ebooks are available. But guys, this is my story that I put out there that I'm sharing with other people. And I realized, you know, many of you probably watch. Uh, these YouTube videos, but you've never read this book. Some of you have read this book and you know my story. Many of you haven't read this book. You don't know my story. So I figured I would take this opportunity on the 10 year anniversary of releasing this book to share my story. So guys, how did I come to Jesus? Did I grow up in some church where there was a taught as a young baby, all of these things? No, not at all, guys. I grew up not attending church on Sundays. Basically, as a clean slate, I didn't have any preconceived ideas of what was 
true or false regarding the afterlife or uh, spiritually what was true, what happened to me was when I was about 12 years old, I had, I, uh, uh, how would you say I contracted, that's right, I contracted a virus uh, known as Eastern Equine Encephalitis. And in fact, to this day, you can go to the Center for Disease Control in the United States and they have a list of people in Virginia, or they have a database of people in Virginia who contracted Eastern Equine Encephalitis. And for the year that was the year I had it, I am the one, right? <laughs> the one in, East, in Virginia. I'm sure there may have been others that maybe didn't get formally diagnosed and entered into the database, but there's one. I can look at that little one and say, hey, that was me, right? So to give you an idea of what this is, you can go look this disease up if you want to, but it causes swelling of the brain and a great number of people who contract that die. They simply go into a coma, they die. Many of the people who survive it have severe brain damage and limited abilities and functions uh, compared to what they had before as they go through the rest of life. And then there are some people that don't have uh, those severe issues. They have milder issues later in life, and I fall into that category, thankfully. So you may notice one of the reasons that I haven't done lot so many live uh, videos in the past is because sometimes, especially late at night, oh, I just space out, right? <laughs> Might be in the middle of talking and then go, I forget why I was even here. When I'm recording a video, well, I can just cut that out, right? <laughs> I can cut the, those few seconds out. It's a lot harder if you're in the middle of a live broadcast. So then not long thereafter, maybe... 18 months later, I got sick again, this time with some mystery illness that they never really truly identified. Luckily, I recovered fully from that. But I, I bring this up for a number of reasons. And one is people, a lot of people might say, well, that's terrible that you had these things happen to you. You know, you had this uh, debilitating disease and it was, was debilitating and is to this day. I still have lingering impacts from that and it was well over 30 years ago. So here we have, you know, something that most people go, oh, that's awful. And I would say, well, no, it was actually the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And you might go, what in the world? How could that be the greatest thing that ever happened to you? And I will tell you, in just a moment, but first I want to show you what this is what the Bible says. This is from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Right? Or they have in the footnotes here or rephrasing that all things work together for good to those who love God. So, guys. The reason I bring that up right here as we're talking about this is I know that there are some other people out there who are going through similar struggles. Maybe it's not some debilitating disease. Maybe it's not their child who's sick. Maybe it's a struggle with addiction or anxiety or fear or rejection or loneliness any of the host of problems that we deal with, and they may say, this is rock bottom. How could this possibly be used for good? And if someone had given me this verse back then when I was 12 years old and said, yep, I know, you know, hey, you might die. <laughs> looks, looks like you didn't. Uh, now you have some issues lingering from that, but don't worry. This God works all things for good, right? <laughs> I would have I would have thought, hey, can't you see the situation I'm in? But let me tell you, let me testify to you that that is true. The greatest thing that ever happened to me 
was having those sicknesses, those debilitating diseases. And this is why, because it forced me to face my mortality at an age when most people don't do that, right? And it forced me to find answers to the most pressing questions of life, questions that everybody, regardless of their beliefs, ask at one point or another, such as, what happens when I die? What, what is true? Is there a God? What's, what's the purpose of life? Why am I here? So I had to answer all of those questions because I remember laying in the hospital and thinking, well, if I died right now, you know, 70, 80, 100 years in the future, you know, once my brother and my cousins died and other people my age, that nobody would even remember I lived. What is the point of being here, right? And again, as, as I told you, I didn't grow up in a church. I'd never really faced a lot of these questions before other than just sort of passing by them, thinking about them here and there, rudimentary rudimentarily, <laughs> can't speak, but at that moment I was like, what is the purpose of life I will find out, right? I am committed to go out and find out, and of course, I'll point your attention to these words right here from Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 8. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So guys, I was searching for truth. I, I wanted to know what is the purpose of life. And I studied and looked at everything that I possibly could, every philosophy, every uh, religious text, every movement that purported to have the truth. And ultimately what happened was it was brought to my attention. In fact, I think it was a, a Time Magazine article where they referenced Hal Lindsey and the late great planet Earth. And within that article, they said, there are all these fulfilled prophecies, right? And I thought, fulfilled prophecies, that's interesting. So I went and I got his book and I started studying and examining for myself if what is what he is saying true were all of these prophecies in the past fulfilled in the bible to the letter were they specific yes they were so i determined yes they were well is can i find these anywhere else right can i find these in other religious texts and i looked there and i found no you couldn't find those things in other religious text. You couldn't find those things in people like Nostradamus. What do we what do we always hear in the, the secular world? Well, I'm no Nostradamus. And it's like, well, Nostradamus just spouted a bunch of gibberish, guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How many people have actually gone and read these quatrains that he wrote? I did. It's a bunch of gibberish, and you really have to twist yourself and contort yourself in every which way to make a claim that Nostradamus foretold anything whatsoever. But that is not the case with the Bible. Guys, the Bible foretold the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, proving he is the Messiah. But not only that, even, even people who might say, well, I think that story is just made up to fit these prophecies that were in the Bible. Okay, even if you believe that, do you have evidence that the Bible we have today is the same one we had in 1947? I might go, well, yeah, I, th I think it is because my, my grandparents had one that's from 1947, maybe even 1847. And it's the same one we have today. Well, that same Bible foretold thousands of years in advance that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will bring his people back into the land of Israel 
from all the nations of the globe where they had been scattered, from north and south and east and west, that he would bring them back into the land so that no longer would people say, the God who brought us out of Egypt, the God who brought us back into the land from all the nations where we were scattered. Guys, there are countless prophecies talking about that specific event that happened here in our lifetime or just prior to many people watching this, their lifetime in 1948, when the modern day nation of Israel became a nation state. Once again, the Jewish people gathered back in the land, just as promised in the Bible. God's prophecy to me proved the Bible was the word of God beyond a shadow of a doubt. Again, no other religious text can show this. God calls this out in the book of Isaiah and says, Let your false idols foretell the beginning from the end. They cannot. Yet God can foretell with astounding accuracy and specificity specific events hundreds and thousands of years before they occur. So guys, in studying all of that, that's what led me to the Lord Jesus Christ to have a peace that surpasses all understanding. And therefore, I'm ready, I'm to, able to, I'm prepared to tell people about the hope that I have in Jesus to this day, because I want to share that with as many people as possible. I hope that you do too. You have a different story. Your story is unique from mine. But it's just as powerful because at the heart of it is the gospel, is the truth. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Guys, there is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's power in preaching the cross that Jesus, who, who never committed sin, he went to the cross, he died, he shed his blood and paid the price for our sins so that we could be reconciled with God and have eternal life. And that message is at the heart of everyone's testimony who knows him. So guys, I encourage you, go out boldly and share your testimony. This isn't something that you have to do in some awkward way where you go up to a stranger and say, let me share my testimony. No, just be genuine, be sincere. If someone's hurting, be relatable. Tell them about times where you've hurt in the past, where you've hit rock bottom, where you've struggled with the same issues they're struggling with. And then simply tell them about how those days are past. Yes, you have problems in this world. Everybody has problems but you don't have the problems you used to have to, with the severity you used to have because you have hope, you have peace in Jesus Christ. Share your story today. Share your story every single day you can in whatever time we have left. Again, no, none of us know how many days we have left today. It could be my last day here from the rapture or I could get hit by a bus. I have no idea. But until my dying breath, everyone who's willing to listen, I will be willing to share the story I have of the hope that Jesus gave me and gives me every single day. So guys, make sure that you are prepared to do that. Make sure you're prepared to just simply share your life with other people. So guys, what do you think? Uh, leave your comments below. Make sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. God willing, I will see you on Friday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to visit my Substack at brittgillette.substack.com. There you'll find my latest videos and articles, as well as notes, where I share the latest news headlines, the articles I'm reading, and the videos I'm watching. Subscribe for free, and each new post on Substack will be sent directly to your email. Just scroll to the bottom of the homepage and hit the subscribe button. 
As an added bonus, your first welcome email will include a link to a copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.